you guys do work um, from 10.30 to 1. Ace and Teddy Micus have been in virtual school in Illinois since March. Today we colored, we painted with watercolors a cornucopia. Their mom has a degree in education and oversees their learning. With my second grader who is always the highest in his class, he is doing just enough to get by, so I am most concerned with his education. But the early research suggests the hard work of teachers, kids, and parents is paying off. The reading findings were pretty surprising. We know this has been a massive disruption for students, for teachers, and so to see that students were kind of continuing to make gains in reading, that was really promising. Still, researchers caution this analysis has big gaps. Roughly one in four students went missing or did not participate in the assessment this fall for lots of reasons. And this research leaves out college students, high schoolers, and the youngest children for whom remote learning is developmentally inappropriate. Experts say they're supposed to be learning through play. Even leaving aside the trauma, the mental health, the social emotional development, just focusing on the academics. All of the evidence suggests that kids who have had disrupted schooling have a hard time getting sort of back on track. For many families, that's the big worry. My son was doing great. You know, he was at the high end and I, I want him to, you know, still be there when we do get back in school. Look, I want to be the bearer of good news here. Point one, kids are making progress. Point two, experts point to the experiences of children who have fled war, survived famine and other catastrophes. And if they get the support and the opportunities on the other side of the disaster, they can and do recover. So what we do as a nation, as educators, as parents to respond to this year, Shep, that will be crucial. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.